Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video on Bugly. Now today we're going to do a little service on Bugly. So I'm bringing you along with me just in case you're not sure what to do or, or it might help you. You never know. Uh, also, I'd like to say thank you to my daughter for a lovely cut. She's done her first ever. So I said to keep some bits on the bowl bit but mm, I don't, we'll see. Anyway, let's crack on with this. So here we go, here's the stuff we're going to change in the service. Got some 1540 mineral oil. It doesn't matter who you ask, everybody have a different opinion on mineral oil. Um, but this is what, it isn't from Brickswork, Brickworks, but this is what they sell for T3 water cooled. So that's what I'm going to use. Got oil filter, uh, air filter. Just, uh, I need to change the fan belt because mine's a bit, getting a bit worn. Uh, my right hand rocker cover is got a bit of a leak, so I've got a new one of them. Got a little sump washer or sump plug washer. Additional things is got this uh, little gator duct thingy because if you watch my previous video, mine's got a little split in it. And also, I got a second hand one of these as the oil filler. Uh, because mine is um, mine's leaking and I've done a goofy repair on it and there's the gasket for it which it looks really weird but it does actually fit see mine I've had to repair with some really big heat shrink because it was all broken off um, th things I'm not going to change in a service I'm not going to change the distributor cap or rotor because I changed them a lot long ago al along with leads and spark plugs but we'll take them out and have a look and have a look at Make sure everything's all right in there. Um, and that's about it, I think. Let's uh, start her up, warm her up, and then drop the oil. Oh, you can see my... No, let's get the light. Ah. See my uh, mucky rocker cover there. Sorry about the light, I can't get it there. See, it's a bit mucky, so I'm going to change that one out anyway. So let's warm it up. I think that'll do. So we're under the bus and this is where your uh, drain plug, plug is and normally it's a hex sort of plug but on mine it isn't it's something else. <laughs> I think it's been stripped out in the past and they put in whatever they could find. So let's get that one out and then drain it into the bucket. While you're under here be careful because it obviously it's hot, the exhaust is there, and so yeah, probably better to have long leaves on, not like me. Right, we'll leave that draining for a little while. And while that's draining, you can take the uh, oil filter off as it's on the left hand side of the engine. <coughs> if I can work out how to do this one. It should only be hand tight, but it's a bit slippery, so let's try with this. That's right. Cracking little tool this. Can't get in everywhere, but don't even know where I got it from. I don't know. Bought it from a swap meet somewhere, I expect. And then, this might make a mess. Ooh, it's a man filter. Very push. Now, when you take this filter off, make sure that the seal is still on the old one and not up on here. Make sure it's not on there. 
because um, I've heard of times when uh, oil filters got stuck on there. Put another one on. Sorry, not the oil filter. Oil filter seal gets stuck on there, and put a new one on, and then it just gets sort of blown out by the oil pressure, and then you lose all your oil. Trash your engine. So. We'll give that a little wipe and that before we put it back on, but yeah, just make sure the seal is on the old filter. The new filter comes with one anyway. Right, we moved up to the top. Next, we're going to do the air filter, which is just clips, but because I've got to replace this, I'm going to undo it. Why not? That one don't want to come off though. Right, so this is a clip that holds the whole assembly, and mine's quite loose anyway. I think that's holding it off. And then normally you pop off those four clips, the top will come off. And there's, oh, there's the airfield. Oh, that's not bad at all. Oh, flipping brand new, that is. Anyway, I've got a new one, we'll change it. Just plonk that one in there. And at the moment, set it one side because I've got to change this. Just a couple of screws. Well, a couple of not cable, pipe clips really. That was that way around. Let's get the new one. So it looks like it goes that way. Bin that. this up and I'll have to manipulate it onto the little lugs we got. There's two little lugs underneath which hold this box still. It's a bit of oil. Find it from those lugs underneath. It's just two pegs that stick out. That's better than it was. And then we've got these two little plugs. Oh, that's a bit knackered, that. I'll get a bit of hose for that, I think. Where's the other one? There. Oh, lost it for a minute. Air filter and little rubbery thing. 
Right, we'll have a look at our spark plugs. Um, the leads are, well the spark plugs are here, you can just follow the leads and find them. A bit awkward on that side. Actually I should have done that when the filter's out, shouldn't I? But hey, let's do an easy one to show you. And then, you just have to repeat it for the rest of them. A bit sooty if anything, but not too bad. So here it is, all I've done is giving it a wire brush. I'm just checking the gap, which on this plug is uh, 0.8 of a mil, but that's 32 thou. So you've got your feeler gauges, put two together, 32 thou. And it's just about right. Should be like a sort of strong magnet. You don't want to jam it in there, but you don't want it to be slippery. So you can feel that's just about right. So I'm going to put this one in. If you were using new plugs, you should gap them anyway. But different plugs and different spec engines have different gaps, so you have to check on your own engine. But yeah, so if it was new, you gap it up, just bung it back in, and you do up the spark plugs to about 20 newton meters, uh, 15 pound foot. So I'm just going to put this one in. Got my torque wrench set up. That one in there, make sure it's nice and clean in there. Don't force these because you might strip the threads. Just make sure they go in nice and easy. Lovely. Don't lead back on. Move on to the next. Next up, looking at the, uh, the distributor cap, and this has just got a clip this side, on the other side. I'm going to try and do it one-handed for you. Just pop that one off, pop that one off. Make sure you just lift off. Oop, trying not to drag it on anything. We'll have a look in there. See, it's all nice and Nice and clean in there. If you these sometimes burn, if they're really really bad, you've got to clean them up or replace the cap. Make sure that springs up and down. I just sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Nice and springy, because that takes makes contact on that. The rotor arm, rotor arm on this looks good. I knew I knew this because I changed it a long ago. But if you wanted to replace it, you just what I would do is put the new one on have the old one next to it and then it you twist it and it locks on so I put the new one on clip it up have the old one next to it in the same position oh, I can't get the clip on sorry that's it so I'd have the old one there and I'd move the lead one at a time and then you know they're in the right place and then if you need to change the leads change one at a time it saves mucking up. If you get them in the wrong place, you'll find it eventually, but it's just a ball ache. Next up for me is the uh, fan belt or well, drive belt. Um, this may be a different setup to you guys because this has got extra brackets because it's actually damaged on the block. So yours may be different to this, but principle is the same. Just back that one off. Hopefully, I'll be able to just take it off of there. Hopefully yours would have a lot more adjustment than this. That's that one off. And the new one. So you've got to go around the dipstick. And then spin her on. And take up some slack on this. I've lost my spanner.
All right, that is a little loose. I need to put a little bit of weight on that one. After much fiddling, basically, I just put a clamp on like that, undone the bolt, whizzed up the clamp, and then done it up again. And we're about there. This one, again, is a bit janky. Next up, a rocker cover. Right, uh, this might make a mess. I left it dripping for quite a while, but it's not that much technical to this. It's just a big clip. Pop it off, if you can. Take it out of the way. Remember how it goes? And we'll see what horrors are behind here. Not too bad. Oh, nice and clean. All right, let's get a new gasket on there. All right, just pop the grip back on. I've given the uh, cover a clean. Now, something you really want to try is get Make sure this face in here and that face is as dry as possible because when you put the cork gasket on here, if it's because it's only held by a clip, it can easily slip out. So if it's got oil across the faces, when you do it up, sometimes they push in and they leak like hell. So just make sure it's all nice and dry on those faces. Ooh, just seen a little bit on there. Put the old new uh, gasket in. Slip it on. Give it a rattle. You know it's sort of in the right sort of place. Put it in the middle. And then it goes back up. will move. That seems quite firm. Now we're moving on to the oil filler, which is this one, which the bolt behind is 13 mil, but is a pain in the bum. The only way of doing that is with two different spanners. You've got to do a little bit of that one, and then a little bit of that one. A little bit of that one. And a little bit of that one. You get the idea. Finally. Nuts off. It was a bolt. There we go. Should be a washer in there. Sure. And then what we'll do this side. Oh, I think this will go up from the top. Anyway, I'll take that out and I'll give that a good clean up. New gasket on there. Pipe goes on there. And then the bolt. Actually, let's move that aside. Is that better? I think. <laughs> bolt. Through the and then just tie that one up and the one at the back. That's that little job done. Well, that inner bolt took longer than it should have, but that was awkward. Let's just snug this one up. Don't be too tight because it's a cork joint. I think that'll do us. Lovely. Just pour a little bit of oil in there. Can't fill it up because it's at an angle on this one. It's a splodge. And then just lubricate the seal. 
Just a splotch. Lovely. So you see I had a little clean up in there. It's still a bit mucky up inside. But I don't want to disturb anything. Got our uh, oil filter with a bit of oil in it. And a damp seal for a missus. Let's chuck it on. Might have a dribble come out. And then this, hand tight. So hand tight with clean hands. Not oily slippery hands. That'll be plenty. Alright, so unfortunately, because mine's a different plug, the um the new crush washer or sealing washer won't fit. This has got a rubber one and it's in good nick, so I'm gonna reuse this. So normally you guys would be doing this up to uh, 25 newton meters, I think it is, 18 pound foot. Oh, let's just check that I wrote it down. Yeah, 18 pound foot or 25 newton meters. Obviously for me, it's going to be just as tight as I can, really. Not the best of tools, but it didn't leak before, so it shouldn't leak again. Right, let's put some oil in it now. Well, I'm not happy, chappy. Just put this in. And look. Uh, how am I supposed to put any flipping oil in that? That's pants. I'm going to put the old one back on. <clears throat> okay, so that's better. I got the original back in, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but hey, so we're going to put some oil in. So we've got five litres there and it's four and a half litres in if you do an oil change. Not if you do an oil change. If you do a filter change. Um, and those of you who've done this before, I've seen it. It's a pain to get anything in there. So I've got what looks quite rude. <laughs> but it is basically cut up milk bowl. It's slow, but it's non-spill. So you just bung it in there. And then glug it in there and it slowly goes in. So let's fill it up with oil. There we go. About half a litre left. All right, let's check the oil quickly. Probably be a little bit high because obviously the oil filter isn't filled yet. So yeah, we're up there. Yeah, just about there. Right, let's crank her over. Let's see if we can uh, prime up the filter. Oh, and for those uh, who didn't know, when you want this one to stay open, obviously it doesn't. This doesn't stay open, does it? If you just take the cap off of there, bung it in there, it stays in a treat. Right, let's try it. I'm hoping that it will crank for a little bit before it fires and then hopefully the oil pressure light will go off. Let's see, I'm not going to use any throttle. <laughs> There she goes. Oh, and it quieted up as well. It is a little bit ticky. There we go. Got a quick look underneath. Make sure there's no oil leaks.
Right, I've just shut it off. We're going to let it settle for a little bit, cool down, and then we'll check the oil again. Um, I did have a look underneath. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear me because it's quite tappity because I haven't taken it on a long run for a while. Th this one, and like many others, I'm sure, if they don't get used for a while, do get quite tappity. So start them up and use them. Give them a good run. Right, that's the way it cooled down. Check got oil again. Right, let's check this oil again. It's cooled down. Give it a wipe. How are we looking? Oh, perfect. See that? Just on the line. I'm happy with that. Lovely, jubbly. I can't get it back in here. But not so good. Is we found another job. Look. That's on top of the coolant reservoir, the pressurized one. A level switch. Looks like it's leaking. That's a job for another day. And while we're in the mood looking at the coolant reservoir, make sure this one's full. You can see it is full. See the bubbles in there? So it's only a tiny, tiny bit of air in there. And then in behind the number plate, the top up reservoir or overflow reservoir. So that's just at the max. So perfect. Perfect and pink. It's all good because I changed it a while ago. Right guys, that is it for another video. We've done a little service. I hope it's of some use to you. I hope if you haven't done it before, it just gives you the confidence to do it. It's just go through it methodically. I can't say it. Methodically. And, and you'll do it. It's, it's, it's easy. And you don't need any special tools. Oh, I must say. Please dispose of your oil responsibly. It should go to a refuse centre where they collect engine oil. Um, or if you know someone who's got a waste oil burner, perhaps they could use it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Give us some feedback. Please give us a like. Uh, and maybe subscribe for our other videos and future videos. Um, join us on Instagram at larks underscore workshop. And I hope to see you next time. Stay safe. Cheers, Anne.